Welcome kindred spirits. Today we have a long video. We're going to cover a lot. I'm going to share a lot of thrifted and consigned items. I'm going to update you on the dried artichokes and how well the paper whites are doing. I'm going to share my stash of some of the dried items I've been putting away for a future project of making potpourris or other craft projects. Show a little mishap of a Tiffany & Company cup that I found out thrifting. I was a little sad about this one. And we're going to make a recipe of orzo. I am creating it as I go and you'll see the steps that I take to create a recipe. I will put a timestamp below for those of you who want to skip around. I hope you enjoy. This is the type of snow that sticks to everything, such as the arch. I'm gonna try to knock that off in a while or else it probably could break it, snap it. And our poor little fruit trees over there are probably worse for wear. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And it sounds so still. One thing I was not expecting is the smell of our Christmas tree is amazing right now because it's all dried up and I'm standing here and I can smell the frolsome very strong. It's it's kind of cool actually. Um, didn't smell as nice as this in the house. <laughs> so I know the wind has got to be, let's see, it's coming from the north. Willow just went out of view, but it's one good thing about the orange coat. Oh, there she is. <laughs> one thing about the orange coat is she really stands out, especially in the snow. We'll see her coming back in a moment. Then we'll make a path for her later, but right now I'm kind of scuffling my feet to give her a path to run back in. A little cardio for myself, that's for sure. Oh, here comes a pop of orange. She's having trouble running. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> but she's smart. Now she's going to follow the old footprints. You took the hard way here across country. All right, I probably have to start my coffee because the generator kept going on and off, so I'm guessing the timer is not set. But I'm just gonna take this in one last time. When it gets a little more daylight out, it's gonna be beautiful-er, beautiful-er, more beautiful. The birds are starting to wake up.
Well, hello, kindred spirits. It has been a little while since I've done a consignment video or thrifting video. And I have been shopping all along for the house, but I've been kind of putting things away and I just, I haven't been sharing. And I figured today would be the day that I share some of the items. Now, some I have here in front of me, and there's a couple things peppered around the house, but not that many. I just, I, I probably have more than I, Thought. And you know what? I might even throw in some new items that I found. I've done a little bit of frivolous shopping as well. So I've got some thrifting and some frivolous. So maybe I'll throw that in. I'm looking at an item on my oven and that's what made me think of it. But I'm going to jump right in because I have some things sitting here. And honestly, I did not sleep at last night at all. I think I woke up at 3 in the morning. No, a little more, 3.30. And I've been up ever since. So this girl is tired. <laughs> but anyway, I have no idea why either. My brain has just been nonstop. But I thought I would share some of these things with you. And they are actually going to be seen in some future videos. So I think I'll start with this one here when I say future video. I thought this was very cute and I will show a close up of it. But this is a large bunny tablecloth and I'm going to create a tablescape here in the kitchen, most likely here in the kitchen with this. Honestly, I didn't even open it yet. I saw it hanging. It was $7 and I didn't open it. Um, <laughs> I should probably see what size it is. It looks like a good size rectangular tablecloth. But look how cute it is with all the bunnies. Now I figured if it doesn't work for a tablecloth, how cute would that be to even make little lumbar pillows or something out of that? But I love the colors in it. And I thought I could very easily pull together a little Easter tablescape for you, a spring tablescape. And I'm gonna work off of these colors, which are all over my house. So I won't have a problem doing that for you. Um, that will probably be a little bit closer to Easter, but um, will give me time to wash it. And I was walking around and all of a sudden these caught my eye. Now, I'm not one for a lot of copper here in the house. And I have tried having copper in my home, every home I've lived in. For some reason, it just doesn't always resonate with me. And I had, I did have a piece in Groton um, that was between the window. I have that. It's like a, the fish mold. But I just don't have a lot of copper. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to break this habit. I'm bringing in some copper. So I did find this set of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me see. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I found ten copper plates from Crate and Barrel. They were a dollar each. And they are in really good shape. Some of them have a few scratches, but they were used and that's fine. They're going to look great on the table. And I thought that having this copper in the house would be pretty. And I don't think it will work with my Easter scape, but for sure we'll go more into the fall or maybe even the summer, late summer. So that is another find right there. Now I think it's in view and I'll show a close up of this, this candle holder here, the hurricane glass. This caught my eye. There are deer on it. And I, for, I do forget what I paid. It might have been $12, something like that. But I had this going the other night, or last month actually, and it was really pretty at night to see this flickering. It's got some gold and some ivory in there. And I really like just sitting here in the kitchen and seeing the light that it casts at night. It's very pretty. So that is something that I definitely snatched when I was out. Clothing. Um, I got a few pieces, but I'm not doing a lot right now with clothes, but I saw this Talbot's jacket that I put it on and it fit me really well. Even with the little bit of extra weight that I have, it really felt fit well with the double blazer and it has a little pulled in cinched waist just a bit. Now, I only noticed this once I got home. It's really hard to see. It almost looks like there's a little wear mark where the seat belt was, but I really, really, really have to stare at it. But I thought, you know, that would be kind of nice going into the fall if, or even now going out to dinner. Ended up finding this little scarf for a little pop of color. And I thought that would look nice. 
So I'm going to take that to the dry cleaner and let them take care of that. And then I have a couple books here. I've been on a book haul lately and these two I found at thrift stores. One of them is Antiques for the Table. And what I liked about this, it has a lot of inspiration in here for table vignettes, for sideboards, and I will once again, I'm going to take a moment here and just show you a few pages and flip through. I really liked just some of the things that I was seeing here, and it will help inspire me to pull things together to share with you that I hope will then inspire you. Um, so this book I, I did like, I forget what I paid for it. Um, I don't know if the price is still here or not, but I know it wasn't a lot because I don't spend a lot for used books. And I'm loving the color of, of the inside here. And that's very pretty. I like to take, sometimes I do take the cover jackets off, jacket cover. Um, so that was one book that I, I did like. Another book that I grabbed, the cover caught my attention. The Art of Dining, A History of Cooking and Eating. And I really liked, once again, the color of the book. It's gonna be beautiful on a coffee table. I actually had it in the living room just so I could sit and look at it. Um, and it goes through, let me just look at this again real, real here. Meet, it goes from the medieval, early Tudor times right up to Victorian and Edwardian. And it talks about food they had and how they served it. And it was very interesting. And inside here, I'm going to show you a photo that goes along with this, but this caught me off guard. I keep reading that they didn't have recipe books going way back. It was always like a learned thing. Well, right here, this is saying 1596, that was in something. And this is talking about herbs. Take your herbs and pick them very fine and put them into fine water and pick your flowers by themselves and wash them clean. Then swing them in a strainer and when you put them into a dish, mingle them with cucumbers or lemons pared and sliced. Also scrape sugar and put in vinegar and oil. Then throw the flowers on the top of the salad and every sort of aforesaid things and garnish the dish about and then take eggs boiled hard and lay about the dish and upon the salad. So I'm gonna just mark that page there for myself, but the, there's some beautiful artwork in here. There's some, you know, looks like from Denmark painters, and I, I was just really impressed by this, and I think this one was $10, $10 at one of our local used bookstores. Just the photos were inspiring, and I love reading history about food and they're talking about like bread and almost all of the different categories here are eras of what it was like. And there's some recipes in here too. Sponge cake. Now that looks easy enough. That only has about five ingredients. So maybe we'll make some recipes from this old book. Speaking of recipe, I wasn't going to bring this up right now, but I was just looking at, at these pictures of cakes. It should be about two weeks maybe less, but let's say two weeks, the vanilla is going to be ready. And when it is, I will make a mention of it and it will be available online and we can ship it anywhere in the country. Unlike the, the bourbon, which is starting to go into stores, it's not in any of our local ones yet, and the online sales. And thank you so much for those of you who have been buying it. I love seeing that some of you are going to be enjoying it. And please let me know what you think. I would love to hear your thoughts and what you, your first sip was like and things like that. But I'll have more information on that also probably when we're talking about the vanilla in a couple weeks. So this book also, I might even keep it here in the kitchen since I have furniture in here and my lamps. It might look just perfectly fine here, but I wanna sit and read so it is in the living room. So what I thought I would do right now is let's walk around just for a couple things. I wanna show you some other items that I purchased. You've seen some already in videos, but I really haven't pointed them out completely, and then um, we'll go from there. All right, let's go take a little walk around the house. It's mainly the kitchen, actually. Now, I thought I would share this because I'm sitting here in the kitchen and I was looking over. I was going to do a video of a lot of my Amazon purchases 
that were frivolous, but I think I'll share this one right now. And then I even mention my pots and pans, I believe, a little bit later when I'm going to do a quick recipe with you. But I broke down and got myself a Le Creuset, Le Creuset, however we say that properly, please help me out here, um, teapot. And it had so many different colors, but I liked this gray enamel. I already forget what they call this particular one, but I will link it um, on my Amazon store and I'll try to remember to link it below as well. And they, like I said, they had a lot of colors. And it has a little whistle to it. Um, I think I have a video of when I first tested it out. I'll try to find that and I'll insert it here. I did hear a little sound when I was pouring tea in. I was thinking it was the metal. Nope, the glass cracked. Well, at least it was only $2. Darn it. I got it for $2. I think I saw it was worth $45. And it was easy come, easy go. So there's absolutely that saying, too much of a good thing can be wonderful. Well, when it comes to the hearts that I tucked on the branches here of the paper whites, it is too much of a good thing, and it's not that wonderful. Now, I, I think it's fun, but I do wish they were a little tinier, but I wanted to show you that I put some of them on here for fun, but I'm going to take them off because it does take away from what's going on inside the basket. You know, if I have time, I'll make some smaller ones, but if you're seeing these for the first time, these are some paper hearts that I made with wallpaper. And there's a video, I think it's two or three back, probably two back. But this basket is something that was purchased recently on consignment. I didn't know I was gonna be using it for the paper whites. I do have a glass container, actually two glass containers inside, if you didn't see the video of us planting these. And when I say us, I guess I mean all the other kindred spirits and myself because I was alone. So let's just say it's us as everybody and that I'm not having a multiple personality thing going on here. But um, I have two glasses in here. And what's fun, if you can see in there, look at the roots going down inside. That's one thing about having glass containers. You can see what's going on. Let me see if I can push this a little bit. How fun is that to show children if you plant bulbs and then you can see what the roots do when they're actually in the ground. I think that's fun. So I have that, and then I still have some of these unplanted bulbs here next to it, and I just made a little display out of it because I have this little spool of ribbon that I picked up. Now, honestly, in the store, to me, it looked a little more green. This is certainly not green. It's more of a blue-gray, and I'm using it a little bit for display, but who knows, down the road, it might be perfect for some sort of art project. Now, I've had this guy for years. He was in the library up on one of the top shelves, but last week when I put this together, I thought he would be cute out here. And look how nice his tummy matches with the gray of that spool of ribbon. I liked that. Um, and I'll just do a little quick overview. Look how fast these have grown. You know, just keep in mind, this is what they looked like seven days ago amazing and they already have some some buds up here getting ready these will be the flowers i had questions somebody said that theirs weren't budding and opening one the store could have had some older bulbs or two they weren't conditioned properly you usually have to you, it will say if it's conditioned or not otherwise you have to put them in the refrigerator and get them cold and kind of 
force it like they've gone through a winter and I don't know the whole process honestly. So that's something that we can maybe research or I can research and find that out. Now these are some sage bundles. In years past I have made some but I picked these up the other day in a store in Peterborough and I've picked them up for a reason. I quickly mentioned it I think in a video but I did capture another voice in one of my videos while one of my friends was here we were making tea. So I don't know if saging a house works or not. I don't know if I believe that saging house can work with that but I might give it a go because it kind of freaked me out. So yeah that's a short story long. This jar or this vase I saw it at I believe this was at um, Salvation Army two dollars. I grabbed it because I knew I was going to be getting my tulips in one of my other vases this size broke. So I got that and you've probably saw this in a couple videos ago as well. Well I ended up moving the Forsythia over near Queen Bess here because the colors are perfect but you can see here that the blooms have started. You've got a little pop of yellow in here and some pops of green and I will have some full-blown blooming forsythia not too far from now. Now this might look weird to some but for me this is a normal day in the Davis household once flowers go by. I like to save the petals and when they're very easy to remove as these tulip petals are I take them off and I save them for a future use where in this case is going to be a potpourri and I will show you a bag of some other petals that I've saved starting back at Groton House where I have some of my peony petals in there and some rose petals and you've probably seen some past videos where I was actually collecting those. I'm in the basement right now and this is where I've been keeping a lot of my dried items. Now these are the tulip petals. I ended up doing just a little slow dry in the oven. They turned a little more of a color than I was hoping but now, now they're done. So I just have a couple packets I had upstairs but let me show you what I have in these drawers. So I have some of my lavender bundles. I've saved cedar from this past Christmas. I have some other dried flowers from the garden and these are hyacinth seeds that I have. I'm just going to pop this in here. I believe my other flowers from Groton are in here too. If not I'll have to take a peek. They're probably upstairs. I'll have to go find them. But I have my dried iris pods. I have acorns and let me see dried iris stems, grape hyacinth seeds, and then I also have a lot of black eyed Susan seeds here. And let's see, iris seeds, these are from yellow and purple mixed. And let's see, lavender leaves. So I have this for future potpourri projects and then also for planting if those will grow again, I'm not sure. I need to go find the pink bag that I have. I found them. They were in the craft area that I set up. So these are some rose petals and peony petals from Groton House. So when I make this potpourri and have it here at the home, I will be reminded of our other home. I think I'll put it here with the lavender. Yeah. Future craft projects. But that's what happens here. I try to save them before they get completely just brown and I'll let these dry and go from there. Now speaking of dry, let me show you what's happening with the artichokes. Um, I thought I would answer a couple questions about the artichokes that I am drying. Now this is hit or miss with how much they're going to open but they do seem to be starting to open. So what I like to do is First I cut the stem so that it's not full of moisture that's going to keep replenishing the artichoke. You could put it inside a container that has uh, maybe some elastics across the top or tape 
just so that it's not holding this part closed. Like if I put it here, it would kind of hold this closed. You want it to be able to open up. But the one that I showed you in last week's video that was beautiful and open, I just left it on a shelf like this. So I'm hoping the same thing will be happening here. I have them, you know, once again, just on the tops. And I might even just like slowly start to open this without breaking it because I don't want to crack the leaves because some might just want to stay closed. But this one's starting to open up. I think this one might be a success. We'll see. And it's going to take a while because this has quite a bit of moisture in it. So I'll keep updating you on how these are working out. And if they don't open, they're still gonna be really pretty in a spring wreath that we make together. And I just have no idea what that will be or what it will look like, but at least I know I have three dried artichokes to use, unless I use them for something else. You know, I've been working around the house and painting and planning for our next seasonal box, and I will fill you in on that I don't know if it will be Wednesday or next Sunday, but watch your emails. I'm gonna just take a turn here. Watch your emails and we're going to be doing something I think pretty cool and different this year. Now in this cabinet, I found and picked up a little bunny. I figured why not grab him now for Easter and he's keeping the cows company. So he's just in there. It was mainly for, for being safe. Just like my daughter forgot her little dish here and her little glass. So it's under the cloche for, for protection. Up here, I found yet another ironstone casserole dish. This has been up here for a few weeks. You've probably, made, not probably, but you may have seen it in videos. But I love the top. And I can't tell if it's a tulip or if it's a bud for like a pumpkin or something because it actually has a curly Q top. Let me grab it and bring it down to show you the top. Okay, now I guess if I research this, I will find out what it is. But like I said, I thought this was a tulip when I saw this and the longer leaves. But it has a, a, a tendril here, a little curly Q tendril. And then I'm like, well, maybe it's the flower for cucumbers or flowers for a pumpkin or something like that. If you know please let me know, but it is in beautiful condition. And let's see here. I forget even what it says. It does say ironstone and I can't read the rest, but it is fairly legible. I'm just gonna have to like take a photo of it and expand it. If you haven't done that trick already, which I'm guessing many of you have, I have to do that a lot. I take a photo and then just make it look bigger so I can read everything. But this was purchased uh, about a month ago. I'll have to look back in some videos and see. It was here next to our pheasants. And last year, you may remember, I have the rabbit casserole dish. So I just realized that I have two rabbits in here. And we have the rabbit tablecloth. So I guess we're on a little rabbit theme right now. All right, I'm gonna put the dish back. I need two hands. It's looking a bit gloomy out. It looks like there could be a storm coming in. We have our binoculars here because there was a big, beautiful owl in a tree across the street the other day. And we see so much beautiful wildlife here. This is not new, but I don't think I ever showed it. Um, I had Last week I had Willow's dog treats in there. They actually ended up going now into a airtight glass container. But I, I liked this, it reminded me of hotel wear and having a little meal served on a dish. So if I'm not feeling good, if I ever want to pamper myself, I might just lay in bed and put a little bowl of soup in there, dreaming. But I thought that was a fun piece to have. Now these are not consignment per se, but one of my neighbors from, brought these over with her when they came for the bourbon tasting and she thought I would like them. They had them in their house and it just didn't work for them. And I love them. I have them right here now on the dining room table just because I'm gonna put them away somewhere that they're easy to get to. But we used them that night for the punch and it worked out perfect. Another thing I have here, I found this Limoges casserole dish. It is in beautiful condition. 
I don't know if this is going to go on the store or if I might sell it in person. Um, I'll have to do a little more research because I have not found this pattern. I have found plenty of other patterns and they range from 49 to over 200 for this style but without knowing the age I, I just don't know what to do right now. So I'm going to do a little more research but it isn't, like I said it's in beautiful condition. I don't see any cracks. I don't see much crazing whatsoever. The bottom has very little wear. So this might have been tucked away in somebody's cabinet for many years. While I'm in the dining room, I have had these for a while. I have a little decanter here. It has cut glass and then this little simple swirl one. But I got them for bath oils and bath salts. But when we had our gathering the other night, I ended up putting in, I think this one's vodka. I'd have to give it a little taste. Yes, this is absolutely vodka because I had it next to the punch for anybody who wanted to add a little something something. And it was fall, so somebody did add a little something something. So I have those that I collected. And I also want to share that when I'm out and about, I also will grab stoppers if I find them because a lot of times these will get chipped. And also I'm going to show you a stopper that works in our bottle for Sugarwood 1790. All right, so you don't have to collect decanters per se, but if you do have a bottle that has liquid in it and you love the bottle, such as I love this bottle that the distillery designed, what I found is that if I went out and grabbed some decanter tops, now I've had these, I have actually a little collection. I don't know what it is about that, but I do collect them. I found out this one's too big, but it might fit another jar. But then I found this one. Now look at the cut around those edges and the top. It is a little loose, so unfortunately I wouldn't use this one because I'd want to have I don't want to have um, the alcohol to evaporate. But if I find something a little bit bigger, it really is a nice match with that. I could possibly do some sort of rubber seal around that just to make it more tight. But once again, once the alcohol's gone, I could put, you know, once they take off the label, I could use this for bath oil. I could use it for bath salts. And then I wouldn't mind that this top was a little bit loose. I don't know if some of these others will fit. Nope, that one's too big too, so maybe this round one will fit there. Nope. So they're all different sizes. So if you like to collect odd things, you could start collecting stoppers. <laughs> and you may know this already, butler's ball. This was uh, used by butlers so you can see what happens in the room if somebody needs some service without staring at the guests, because I can see everything in the room behind me. Hello. Each morning I wake and I try to go through things that I'm grateful for. And my goodness, one of the things I am grateful for is having a view like this to wake to and just being able to live in the moment and realize that Mother Nature is amazing. My gosh, this is beautiful. You just can't make this up. Well, I guess you can now with AI, but this is real. This was one of those mornings that I just had to put my coat on, slip on my boots, and just stand in the front yard, take in a deep breath, and enjoy the moment. It was so silent, so relaxing. When there's time to create a moment, take it. You won't regret it. Well, I had a craving for risotto, and I'm thinking, I've never made risotto. But then when I was going through some of my old photos, I realized, oh yes, I have certainly made risotto. But I didn't have any in the house. I had orzo. So I decided to create a recipe just going with the flow and winging it with what I would have done with the risotto. 
And really the only difference is I had to use a lot more liquid and I put my own ingredients in. So I'm going to share with you how I did this. I'm going to speed it up because I, like I said, I was winging it and trying to figure out how much liquid and how many spices I wanted to put in. But I did write everything down. Well, I had a craving for risotto tonight, but I only had orzo. I'm going to make a orzo with mushrooms and just go for it. So all I'm going to do is heat my pan a little bit here. And I've had quite a few ask about my pans. These are caraway. Now I got these on Amazon last year and I've been waiting to share a lot about them because I wanted to test them out and I do love them. The only thing is, is that when I'm trying to brown something like my scallops, I would definitely go more towards my iron pan. Um, but these are fantastic. Easy to keep clean. They don't, things don't burn. You use lower heat. So I'd go almost on, you know, below medium for sure on these. I'm just going to put about a tablespoon of butter in each pan. I'm going to start this one up too. Let's see. This one I'm going to do my mushrooms in it just to saute them. So I'm going to put, like I said, about a tablespoon of butter, about a tablespoon of oil. about that and I have about four or five shallots here that I diced and I'm going to just stir these up till they get almost translucent and over here I'm going to add the mushrooms you can see how fast these already heat up too they they I really like them a lot in the background here, I got my, I have my new teapot. Really enjoy that. Okay. Oops. I'm just trying to get them a little pre-cooked, a little translucent here. I'm going to turn my heat down, and this is already on medium low, so this is what I was talking about. These heat up really fast and really well. So two cups of orzo, and I'm just going to stir this around for about two minutes, kind of just like to, I guess for lack of better words, toast it a little bit. Okay, this part's almost done. I'm just trying to make the orzo, you know, a little toasting, a little golden brown here. And if you've made rice aroni from a box before, pretty much doing the same thing with this. I just popped some chicken broth in the microwave because when I add it to this, I don't want it too cold to slow down the cooking process. So I've got that nice and hot. But first I'm going to add some white wine. And I have some Chardonnay here in the house. It's non-oaked. And the reason I'm, I, I'm okay with the Chardonnay because it has that nice buttery flavor and it goes well with mushrooms and this. I'm just going to do about half a cup. And I'm going to add a little bit of this right now until it soaks up. Just going to stir this until it pretty much takes in all of that liquid. Get these pieces in here. Mushrooms are getting nice and soft. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more. Whenever I cook mushrooms, I keep forgetting how small they get from the amount that you cut. Doing this by eye and probably could have cut more. I could have had it on the burner next to me, but I didn't want to mess up another pan. I already have all those other little dishes that I do for prep work. In a moment, I'm going to add the mushrooms, cover this up, and then wait till the orzo gets nice and tender. And then I'm going to add a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and I could probably add some herbs right now. I might do that. I'm going to add a 
add a little bit nutritional yeast that I have. Nice nutty, cheesy flavor. I'm gonna do about just a tablespoon added in here. Sharing some information from the internet that nutritional yeast is a great source of vitamins and minerals. It also contains all the essential amino acids, making it a complete protein like those found in animal products. And I've been using nutritional yeast quite a bit for years, and I do like it. I'm going to do, oh no, I'm going to do about a teaspoon of rosemary. Let's see how that does at first. As many of you know by watching, I am not, I would say I'm not a good cook, but I enjoy trying. And if something doesn't work, I then try to modify it. I was actually craving risotto today. Bummed out that I don't have it, but this will still be delicious. I'm tempted to put a little more chicken stock because what I the amount I put was for risotto. I'm going to. That soaked it right up. Once I have the recipe down pat, I could certainly add all of the liquid and let it simmer to soften, but right now I'm trying to figure out how much I need, and this way I was able to gauge the amount of chicken broth in wine that I did add. I'm going to add some sage too. I hope I don't ruin it, but I'm even going to add a little pinch, just a pinch of nutmeg. Sometimes I like to go into my cabinet and smell the herbs and the spices and envision the taste with what I'm making. And I think with this nice, buttery, rich Chardonnay, Parmesan cheese, mushroom, I can't call it risotto, orzo, a little bit of nutmeg might taste yummy. Almost at the point where I'm going to add my Parmesan cheese to melt it. Mm, I put a, that's yummy, I put a little extra thyme in there. I can taste the rosemary. Delicious. I did not add salt yet. I'm going to do that to taste. So my guilty pleasure after this is we're going to sit a glass of wine and we're watching our recorded Oak Island. I've been watching it since the beginning. Treasure hunting. Been to Oak Island when I was little. And I like to pretend that Smith Cove on that island is my family, but don't really think so at all. Especially since we don't think my family really is Smith's. The family story of Smith is that one of my great greats jumped ship while entering the harbor and changed their name to Smith. Well, on Ancestry, everybody's been trying to do research. Nobody can figure it out because my third great grandfather does just drop off the face of the earth. I finally found a cousin who is taking a test for us. I'm paying for a test. Hopefully it will answer the real surname of our family line. And if it comes back, with an answer, we will be answering the Smith question for thousands and thousands of other Smiths that are in Nova Scotia. I just sprinkled on a little more nutritional yeast because I do like that nutty, almost cheddar cheese flavor. And I'm even going to add, let's say, yeah, about a teaspoon of garlic powder. Going for it. And then I'll put a little butter and it will be all set. I will be eating this in moderation, of course. I am so pleased at how this came out. For the next few days, we were able to have it as a side. I did add a little bit more broth the next day because overnight it soaked it up, but it was even better the next day. Well, kindred spirits, that's it for today. We did a little baking. Actually, we did a little cooking and a little update here on our paper whites. And then I showed you some thrift store and consignment finds. And I have some more things I'm going to be sharing with you next week. I actually bought some ingredients to try to make some seeded crackers. I don't know how they're gonna taste. I'm gonna be copying a recipe from the book. 
but we'll make them and we'll go from there. Bye now.